All of these four formulas have something in common. What they are actually doing is take this cell B2 times the number from here plus this cell C2 times the number from here and sum those two quantities. And then we repeat down here in the same style but we actually just keep these two cells and instead of doing one and one we use three and two and then when we go down we use those two again but instead of using three and two we use two and four. So all of this could be made a little uh, simpler if we use one of the functions that Excel has called sum product. So let's do that. If you type it like this, what sum product does is it takes two ranges of the same size and I'm going to take the first range being this one and you separate them, them by commas, comma and the second range is this one and what this does is it takes the first cell from the first range multiplies that with the first cell from the second range and then takes the second cell from the first range and multiply that with multiplies that with the second cell from the second range and so on and so forth and then sums everything so that will give you b2 times b3 plus c2 times c3 okay well so far we haven't saved much um, but what happens is that if we take that formula the way it is here you could actually drag this down and copy it to these other cells but there is a problem the way this formula is typed in here which is like this what will happen is when you drag this formula down these B2C2 will update to B3C3 and the B3C3 will update to B4C4. Well, we would like the B3C3 to become B4C4 because we're changing the numbers from 1, 1 to 3, 2. But we don't want the B2C2 to be moved down to B3C3. We want that to stay where it is. So one way of doing this is to just go back here and use those dollar signs to anchor that range of cells where it is. So if we do that, that is telling Excel not to change that range when you drag a formula one way or another. But we're not going to use these in the second parameter of the sum product because we want the B3C3 to be updated to B4C4. So if you do that there, then we can copy this all the way down. And notice we only had to type that expression once and we drag it down three more times. We have four formulas written down for us. Okay, let me get rid of this warning. Okay, now we have all of these in the model. We did this for ourselves. We haven't told Excel yet what these things are. We haven't told Excel that these two cells are variables and we haven't told Excel that these uh, cells here are constraints and we haven't told Excel that this cell D6 is an objective function. So that's what we're going to do next. To do that, we have to open the solver window so here it is and we have to just fill out some of these um, fields here to let Excel know that we're actually dealing with an optimization problem. So target cell is asking you for the cell that contains the formula that is your objective function. In this case it is D6 so we type it there and this next part here is asking you whether you're minimizing or maximizing. In our case we're maximizing because it's a profit function. And down here by changing cells Excel is asking you where are your variables. 
and in our case they are in B2 in the range B2 C2 so we can say B2 colon C2 and then finally in the constraint part we're going to add the constraints so if you click this add button here you have this uh, window pop up and what you do is it's asking you what is the uh, formula on the left hand side for the first constraint it is here in D3 here in the middle I have this drop down menu that allows you to choose the sense in our case it's less than or equal to and then it's asking you for the cell that contains the expression on the right and for us that's going to be F3 okay and then we're going to repeat this for the other two constraints so we could say D4 less than or equal to F4 and D5 less than or equal to F5 because all of these constraints are lined up like this and they're all of the same sense and these numbers are also lined up like this we could have saved some time by doing it this way we can say this range here D3 through D5 is less than or equal to this other range F3 through F5 so this is equivalent to doing the three separate constraints that we did before all right so now we go back to the solver uh, window we have again our objective function cell here maximization our variables over here and our constraints over here before we solve we have to do one last step click in here um, in the options button and this window shows up and what you have to do there is first of all say that this is a linear programming model so assume linear and remember our variables are non negative so we also check this um, item that says assume non negative then you hit OK and now we're ready to solve when you solve the solution is going to pop up in here in B2 and C2 and let's see what happens it's setting up takes a few seconds and then it comes back with this window it says solver found a solution all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied this means that it indeed found the optimal solution if it were to say something else like the problem is infeasible or solver did not converge you cannot trust the numbers that come back but when it says this it means that the numbers are indeed the optimal solution so if you hit OK we can go back and analyze this see well you should plant 20 acres with wheat and 20 acres with corn and that will give you a profit of ten thousand dollars and this is the same result that we obtained when we use the graphical method so we're confident that this works well that's it for now for the uh, our first uh, linear programming model in Excel I hope uh, this has been useful and um, I hope to see you back here um, watching some other videos um, on how to model and solve other kinds of problems. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.